This is Vanessa Lupian. She's 13 years old. Um, she took the day off of class from school today to uh, to come and talk with us, and this is her mother, Veronica. Hello. So um, if, I, if I could, would you mind just talking about your experience when she was diagnosed with maple syrup disease and what, what that was like? Mm -hmm. um, at first, when Vanessa was born, um, nobody knew what she had. They knew something was wrong. And um, after a week, she got admitted into the hospital. Um, and even during that, that second week that she was there, it still took them time before she was diagnosed because they didn't know what she had. And it wasn't something that newborns were tested for. Um, but finally, after you know two weeks, uh, two weeks of being born, they finally realized that she had MSUD. Um, from that point on, our life completely changed. Um, it hasn't been easy uh, as a family, and it hasn't been easy especially for her. Um, you know, for her to be around food constantly and be something that she, a lot of it she could not even have. Um, it was such a big temptation for her. And for us as a family, it was hard to see her just look at us and eat these foods. Um, when she, uh, as growing up, um, she was very responsible, but she had temptations, and there were times where she would go and hide, and and because she, she was wanted to try, you know, whether it was that piece of chocolate candy or you know this and that, and of course that's where my panic came in, um, because I would worry and I would think she is really um, going to get sick, what's going to happen, and so forth, and. Um, there, there were, um, since she was born till 10 years old, she was in the hospital once or twice every year. Um, and three or four times of those, she, um, we were close to losing her. You know, she had to be taken by ambulance. Um, she had to have dialysis done in order to save her life. And even then, the outcome of it, we were never sure what the outcome was. Um, Thankfully, um, she made it through it all. The other aspect of living with MSUD was she had to be on a special formula, and a formula that she had to take that we knew would be for the rest of her life. Um, she had to be on a very special diet. The foods that she was able to eat that were very low in protein or no protein at all, they had to be put on a scale. So it's not like she can have the amount that she wanted to have. So even if she wanted more, we couldn't give her more, you know. Um, it was very difficult for her, you know. And um, having for us to carry around just everything for her to make sure we provided what she needed when we went out and, and did things with her. Um, when she would get sick, um, she would just, we would start seeing those side effects of her just, not wanting to eat, the constant throwing up, um, and then her being just to the point where she even at times start hallucinating, not knowing who we were. All those points are very scary. Um, we take her to the hospital, um, and there have been times that when we go to the hospital, the doctors didn't even know exactly what MSUD was. As a parent, that's scary because you go there and you wonder, you know, well, they know what to do. You know, they don't know. As, and so I had to be really um, on top of things and see what they were doing or what the nurses were giving her and, and so forth because it could have made the matter, her situation, even worse. Um, nice intensive care when she's there and everything. And the, there are times, you know, she's constantly having breathing tubes put down her just... Just seeing what she would go through is the hardest thing ever. You know, it's it's not easy on any parent um, to see their child go through what they go in at any medical situation. But um, we finally were told about a liver transplant that could help her um, be able to eat all these foods that she's always craved. It was a decision that took us a while to decide to do because we didn't know if it was the right one or not. Um, do we go through this and will she lose her life, you know? Do we not go through it and what if she has 
uh, metabolic breakdown to where, you know, she has brain damage and it leaves her in a situation where she needs even more care. Um, you know, we finally spoke to her and, and I told her the situation. I said, this is what they're offering you, is a liver transplant to be able to eat all these foods and live as what we can say a better normal life. Um, I told her that she would have um, the say in if she wanted to do this. I didn't want to put her through something that maybe she didn't want to do. Um, she started crying at that point, and I thought, oh my goodness, I told her something maybe she wasn't ready for. Um, and she cried, and I was like, I'm sorry, maybe I shouldn't have told you. It's like, why are you crying? She goes, Mom, it's the happiest day of my life. She said, I can't believe I'm going to finally be able to eat all the things that I've been wanting to eat. The things that I would just either touch or smell because that was my only way of knowing, you know, what it was like. So um, I finally made that call and told them that we were going to go through with it. Um, she got the call that one day that Though there was a liver for her, we went in. She was scared, but um, she was very calm about it. Uh, and we thought this, you know, this is going to work. This is going to happen for her. Um, she had her liver transplant in March of 2010. And within a month, we started seeing complications with her. Um, one thing after another was going on with her that we would go home and then they would tell us no you need to come back this is going on um, she ended up having uh in three and a half months as she spent in and out of the hospital after that first transplant she um she had four surgeries four major surgeries and she ended up having two liver transplants um, the second one was in june of 2010. Um, Thankfully, after that second um, liver transplant, um, she did better. Um, and, and even after that one, I think it took some time for her to even adjust to being able to eat all these new foods. Uh, when you see your child or anyone for that matter go to this restaurant, and for her it may feel like the very first time and to see a menu and to look at all this food and sometimes not even know what all this food is because she's never even had it or even, even really heard of it. Um, it's one of the greatest things and, and it's something that a lot of us take for granted. You know? um, so for me, this, this is what we've been going through. Thankfully now she's doing well and you know, she goes to school full time now um, and, and I'm you know, really, really happy with the way things are now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, Vanessa, what's your favorite food to eat? <laughs> um, my favorite food right now is French fries. <laughs> Ms. Gibbons? You're quite the warrior, and um, you've been through a lot. You've faced a lot. You must have a lot of courage. It's obvious you're really brave. What do your friends know about your transplant? And you know, are you at school? Do they know? Oh, that's the girl with the new liver. Or how, what do they know about it? They just know that I'm the one that had the transplant, and that like they have to be sometimes careful still. Mm -hmm. So, and like sometimes I could be very sensitive to what they say. You know. But I bet you're teaching them a lot. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. When you would eat foods that you, like like your mom was saying she was afraid you were going to have a forbidden food that was going to react badly mm -hmm. with you and that your liver couldn't process, what did you feel like? How sick did you get? I was pretty sick to the point where sometimes I wasn't able to walk and I felt scared. So it would make you weak and sick to your stomach? You were yes. vomiting, all that? Yes. Wow, you must love your doctors, <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, I'm sure they love you. Wow, you guys did a great job. I didn't know anything about all this, so thank you for helping to educate us. You're welcome.